Faith tested, worlds broken. This is not legend, this is not myth. This is Codex Historia. I did not begin this investigation with myths, legends, or ancient gods. I began with timelines because timelines do not care what we believe. They either align with evidence or they do not. According to the fossil record, approximately seven million years ago, an ape-like primate began walking upright with consistency. This was not a dramatic transformation and not a sudden leap forward in intelligence. It was a biomechanical shift that allowed the hands to free themselves from locomotion while the brain remained largely unchanged. For millions of years afterward, evolution continued at a pace that is slow, measurable, and familiar to biology. Early hominins adapted gradually to their environments, learning to exploit resources, fashion rudimentary stone tools, and master fire. But they did so without innovation accelerating beyond narrow limits. For more than two million years, stone tools changed in shape but not in principle. Fire was used but not transformed into technology. Hunting strategies improved, yet remained repetitive and conservative. Entire species lived, reproduced, and vanished without leaving any evidence of symbolic thought, abstract reasoning, or cumulative innovation. This extended stagnation is not debated. It is one of the clearest patterns in paleoanthropology. Then around 300,000 years ago, Homo sapiens appeared. At first, nothing about them seemed extraordinary. For tens of thousands of years, they lived much like their predecessors. They hunted, migrated, survived, and adapted. But they did not build cities, record knowledge, or display explosive cultural complexity. For nearly 200,000 years after their emergence, modern humans remained behaviorally unremarkable. And then, within a relatively narrow window between roughly 70,000 and 40,000 years ago, the pattern that had governed human development for millions of years abruptly collapsed. Symbolic art appeared in multiple regions. Burial practices emerged that implied concepts of identity, memory, and possibly an afterlife. Long distance trade networks formed indicating social organization beyond kinship or immediate survival. Language appears to have crossed a threshold, becoming capable of transmitting abstract ideas, instructions, and narratives that extended beyond direct experience. Within the same period, every other human species disappeared. Neanderthals, who had comparable brain sizes and complex social structures, vanished. Denisovans, adapted to extreme environments, vanished. Only Homo sapiens remained, and they did not merely survive. They expanded, adapted, and dominated every habitable region of the planet. This alone raises questions that cannot be dismissed as curiosity, but the acceleration that followed is more difficult to reconcile. From the first monumental structures to the development of writing, formal law, mathematics, astronomy, and organized states took less than 10,000 years. From those early civilizations to machines capable of escaping Earth's gravity took only a few thousand more. In evolutionary terms, this is not progress. It is a vertical wall. Evolution does not behave this way. Natural selection favors gradual adaptation shaped by pressure and time. It does not produce extended stagnation followed by explosive complexity without a corresponding catalyst. Mainstream explanations attempt to account for this shift through cumulative culture, feedback loops created by language, and population density enabling faster idea transmission. These explanations are serious, evidence-based, and necessary. They are also incomplete because they describe how acceleration spreads, not why it began when it did. Neanderthals possessed language. They created art. They buried their dead. If cumulative culture alone were sufficient, there is no clear reason they should have lost. Genetics adds another layer to the problem. Modern humans exhibit subtle differences in early brain development compared to other hominins, not in overall brain size, but in the speed at which neurons form and organize during fetal development. One particular genetic variation appears to accelerate neural growth in Homo sapiens relative to closely related species. The difference is minute, measured at the level of a single amino acid. Yet its effect on cognitive capacity is significant. Such mutations can occur naturally. Biology allows for that. But what biology struggles to explain is timing, because for hundreds of thousands of years, Homo sapiens existed without this explosive behavioral change. 
The mutation alone does not explain the delay, nor does it explain why the transition appears abrupt rather than gradual. Science does not claim intervention, and it should not without evidence. But science also cannot fully explain why the switch flipped when it did. This is where the investigation moves beyond fossils and genes, into memory, not evidence. Memory, across cultures that had no contact with one another, stories emerge with remarkably similar structures. Beings descend from above or emerge from elsewhere. Knowledge is given rather than discovered. Labor is imposed, rebellion follows. Catastrophe resets the world. A remnant survives and begins again. These stories appear in Mesopotamia, the Levant, India, East Asia, the Americas, and the Pacific. Historians describe this as myth convergence. Anthropologists describe it as symbolic storytelling shaped by shared human fears. These explanations are plausible, but they depend on diffusion or universal psychology. Diffusion requires contact, which did not exist between many of these cultures. Universal psychology does not explain why the same narrative architecture appears so consistently, rather than diverging wildly as myths often do. The earliest written versions of these stories appear in southern Mesopotamia. The Sumerians were obsessive record keepers. They wrote about kings, contracts, irrigation, and stars. They also wrote about beings they called Anuna, a term that does not mean visitors from the sky, but rather those of royal lineage. In their texts, these figures are administrators, lawgivers, and organizers, not creators of the cosmos. Later cultures transformed them into gods. Much later interpretations transformed them again into something else entirely. Most modern reinterpretations distort the original language and context, and many of the popular claims about extraterrestrial visitors collapse under linguistic scrutiny. Yet the core memory preserved in the earliest texts remains unsettling because humanity is not portrayed as discovering civilization on its own, but as being structured into it. Then there is the flood. Geology does not support a single global flood covering the entire planet, but it does confirm massive catastrophic flooding at the end of the last ice age, particularly in coastal regions where early human populations would have concentrated. Sea levels rose violently, shorelines disappeared, entire ecosystems collapsed. Civilizations dependent on oral tradition and ritual memory would have been erased almost completely, leaving behind only fragments carried by survivors. If a technologically modest but socially complex civilization existed prior to that collapse, its disappearance would leave exactly the kind of record we see now. No durable infrastructure, no metal remnants, no clear continuity, only myths describing loss, judgment, and renewal. One anomaly remains difficult to ignore, gold. In early societies, gold served little practical purpose. It did not improve survival, agriculture, or warfare. Yet it appears obsessively in early texts as something demanded, accumulated, and revered. Later civilizations inherited the obsession without understanding its origin. Archaeology does not support ancient industrial gold extraction on a planetary scale, and claims that it does are unsupported. But memory does not preserve reasons, only importance. None of this proves that humanity was engineered, guided, or shaped by an external intelligence. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, and such evidence does not exist. What does exist is a pattern that resists comfort, a long silence and innovation, followed by a sudden ignition, a universal memory of teachers rather than discoverers, a recurring narrative of collapse and restart, a species that behaves less like one that slowly awakened and more like one that was released. The most unsettling implication is not that someone made us. It is that consciousness, once ignited, refuses containment. If humanity was ever organized for a purpose, that purpose did not last. If it was ever meant to serve, it learned instead to question. Today, we stand at another vertical curve. Technology accelerates faster than ethical understanding. Intelligence expands faster than restraint. Systems are built faster than wisdom can govern them. Whether or not ancient stories describe real events, they preserve a warning that remains relevant. When knowledge outruns responsibility, collapse follows. This investigation does not end with answers. 
because history rarely provides them. It ends with recognition. Recognition that something in our past does not align cleanly, that the spark which defines humanity arrived faster than it should have, and that every civilization before us left behind the same cautionary memory. Not about gods, not about creators, but about what happens when intelligence awakens before it understands itself. That pattern does not care what we believe, and patterns once identified do not disappear.